How's it going everybody? My name is Josh, Amateur Radio Call Sign, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. On Sunday, January 17, 2021, the FCC released an FCC Enforcement Advisory and it is titled, Warning, Amateur and Personal Radio Service Licenses and Operators May Not Use Radio Equipment to Commit or Facilitate Criminal Acts. It's about a little bit over a page and we're going to break it down along with some of the other stories that came up from the ARRL. Thanks so much for watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. Let's get started. Why did the FCC send out this notice? Well, to me, it's fairly clear. You can disagree with me in the comments, if you will, but this is why. The Capitol protest, the invasion of the Capitol, the attempted coup of the Capitol, whatever you'd like to call it, featured a pretty generous amount of people that were prominently displaying what very much look like cheap, inexpensive radios that are imported and sold out of China. The Baofeng, for instance, right? Everybody knows the Baofeng, particularly if you've seen my channel. It's probably how you found my content. Now, the FCC's notice here mentions both amateur radio and personal radio services. So I'm going to talk about ham radio a lot here, but keep in mind this also includes FRS and GMRS radios. We talked about them on a recent live stream. You can watch that. It talks about what they are, kind of why you might be interested in them. But these are two-way radios, meaning anyone with a radio that's keyed to the same frequency can talk to each other. During the events that happened at the Capitol, there are reports and there are actual recorded instances of people using personal radio service and amateur radio service radios, and by what I mean specifically, transmitting on those frequencies to coordinate the events that they were undertaking. Things went so far as to having individuals that were using these radios, the amateur radios, connecting to the Washington DC repeaters and using the repeaters there to coordinate their efforts insofar as actually using coded words, you know, the chairs against the wall kind of stuff. And that gets mentioned in this FCC enforcement advisory. That's a no-no in amateur radio. Those repeaters were eventually turned off as is the claim of a local ham who reported this online. I, if I get more information on that, I will make sure to follow, make a follow-on video so that I can update you as to what happened. All right, so what's the verbiage of the FCC document? This is DA-2173, and I'll give you some context as we're going through it. The Enforcement Bureau of the Federal Communications Communi Commission issues this enforcement advisory to remind licensees in the amateur radio service as well as licensees and operators in the personal radio service that the commission prohibits the use of radios in those services to commit or facilitate criminal acts. Sure, right? I'm not surprised by that. Uh, this is the government, as, as you well know, at least here in the States, the FCC. They're not going to be uh, support of using radios that they provide the service for to break their government laws. That makes sense, I think. Yeah. The Bureau has become aware of discussions on social media platforms suggesting that certain radio services regulated by the Commission may be an alternative to social media platforms for groups to communicate and coordinate future activities. The Bureau recognized that these services can be used for a wide range of permitted purposes, including speech that is protected under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, amateur radio and personal radio services. However, may not be used to commit or facilitate crimes. This is an important distinction. It is often mentioned that we shouldn't talk about religion, politics, or sex in amateur radio. And that is true. But you're still allowed to have those discussions, believe it or not, on amateur radio, including and in so far as having really heated political discussions. You know, over the air, thousands of miles away in some cases, it happens all the time. There's a level of discord that we have, though, where it's not just uh, an all-out brawl and everybody hopefully turns their radio off amicably. So yes, you, you can, of course, have First Amendment discussions on amateur radio. The first part of that paragraph, though, the discussions on social media platforms about using ham radio, that's happening right now as we're going through situations with Parler and other 
websites and apps going out of business for whatever reason. I'm not going to get into that on this video. But I will say that, yes, that is absolutely happening. People are thinking that ham radio is going to be this replacement to social media. And I got to say, I don't see it, guys. I think that that's not necessarily the best use of, of your time, particularly if what you're expecting is a Twitter-like or Facebook-like experience. I love amateur radio. My whole channel is devoted to it. But I'm not going to tell you that this would be in any way a replacement of something like Facebook or our Discord. Go check out our Discord link is in the description. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking, if you're watching this, you're new to amateur radio, oh, this is just going to replace insert social media here. It really won't. And I don't want you to get discouraged thinking that you're going to get something out of it that you're not, because that's really not going to happen. Now, I don't want to belabor this point too far, but uh, yes, ham radio will work if you have a small group of people and you want to communicate and you're within a mile or so of each other. Absolutely. If you incorporate repeaters, that'll work too. If you have a bunch of local people that you want to coordinate an event with, yeah, absolutely, you can, you can do that. Uh, it's the social media aspect. This, I make a post and then I can kind of walk away from it and I can come back to it and I can see the comments. That doesn't really exist. It does in a certain way, but it, we're talking a, a technical rabbit hole that you can go follow my channel for more information on things like packet radio, a JSA call, those kind of things that would be a little bit more apt in that, in that space. But let's keep going. Specifically, the Bureau reminds amateur licensees that they are prohibited from transmitting communications intended to facilitate a criminal act or messages encoded for the purpose of obscuring the meaning. Likewise, individuals operating radios in the personal radio services, a category that includes, and this is important, citizen band radio, that's CB, family radio service, FRS, walkie-talkies, and the general mobile radio service, GMRS, are prohibited from using those radios in connection with any activity which is against federal, state, or local law. Individuals using radios in the amateur or personal radio services in this manner may be subject to severe penalties, including significant fines, seizure of the offending equipment, and in some cases, criminal prosecution. Sure, I don't think anybody's surprised by that. What we're dealing with here in this situation, and again, it's directly related to the events that happened at the Capitol. I'm, I'm pretty positive of that. If, if the FCC comes back and says, no, that's not the case, I'll correct this. But it's totally related to that from my point of view. If there are people that are using radios of any service, CB, FRS, GMRS, ham radio, doesn't matter, and they're using coded words, right? They're using, you know, see you at the baseball diamond, and that means we're going to go to the Senate floor, right? And we're going to go to the podium, meet you at home base, that kind of stuff. You can't use that kind of language in amateur radio. You can't use that with CB. You can't use that generally anywhere. Does it happen? Yes. Is it illegal specifically when it's a, a crime? Absolutely. So that's a lot of the problem is that how these radios were used was illegal. Now, we're seeing this as amateur radio operators because we are licensed. We're getting messages from the ARRL for those of you that are members of the ARRL. And we're seeing this come into our inboxes and going, you know, what's all this about? I was in Cerritos, California when all this went down. I'm not doing anything illegal. And so there's a lot of hams that are probably watching me right now. They're like, well, I don't do anything illegal. What's the problem? Yeah, this isn't really for you, and I appreciate that uh, for the people that may illegally use the radios or the people that were at the, the, the Capitol, they probably won't see this, <laughs> I, I, and I, I really want to be clear with that. It's my personal belief that a lot of the people that were using the radios are not licensed to begin with. Uh, they probably had no intention of getting a license. They probably saw this as a thing to facilitate what they wanted to do, which was whatever you believe. Politically, we're not going to go down that road. We're going to keep it to ham radio. But they had a goal in mind. They used a device that they felt would satisfy that goal, and it was radios of ham radio variety and the public service variety. So keep that in mind, right? You can't use coded messages. Uh, you can't do basically exactly what happened with radio. So let's take this even a step further, because this has been a topic of discussion for the whole day that it's been out. I've been getting messages, tweets, Instagram messages, you name it. A lot of people have mentioned DMR encryption. 
And that possibly was used, I don't know. I, I heard that the term repeater was mentioned and uh, that they were using coded words on a repeater. And I saw a lot of Baofeng type derivative radios. So I have to believe that it was probably a lot of analog communication, which is just FM voice. But people have commented DMR encryption. So DMR encryption is on most DMR radios that you can buy for amateur radio purposes. It's not legal to use. Where it is legal is if you have a business license. Business license radios are frequency spaces that you pay for from the FCC for use in your business, the geographical location of your business. In that capacity, you can turn on DMR encryption. But let's take this down even a further level. If you're just checking a box to do encryption, it's likely the people that would want to come find you if you were doing crime will have no problem breaking that encryption. Since it's not a unique key file or, or uh, two-party key system or some key fill solution, it's not gonna be hard for them to get access to. So yeah, just keep in mind, if you think you're fooling somebody, <laughs> the people you want to fool if you're doing crime, you might not be. I had to come back and shoot an update. Boy, I totally forgot about direction finding. Whew, let's talk about that for a second. Amateur radio is not anonymous. Even if you had the best encryption in the world, it's coming out of a transmitter at a location that can be discovered. And we do that via radio direction finding. Triangulation is a term you've probably heard. Hams make a sport out of it. We like doing it. It's fun for us. And guess what? So does uh, the Enforcement Bureau of the FCC. So does any name, uh, a three-letter uh, acronym group. They, they also have that capability. And so direction finding is, is always a possibility. If, you, if you're using your radio to commit a crime, it's very easy to find you doing it if you do it long enough or consistently. So just keep that in mind as well. Direction finding is a really big thing, and I couldn't have made this video without mentioning, so onward. That takes me to a dark place. Let's go real dark with this. Let's say all bets were off. Let's say we were invaded by a foreign power, very Red Dawn-ish, and you pull out your DMR radio and you're like, I'm turning on the encryption. Whoever it is <laughs> that's, uh, that's attacking us, I'm using that as, a, as a, just a good example. They probably also know how to crack that if they're a, an organized military. Further, you probably won't even be able to transmit because they can jam an entire frequency space and put you out of business. So keep in mind what radio is, right? Scientifically, a frequency space that we use for different types of communication, but just because we can communicate two-way with it with things like an analog FM radio. If some big dog with a big amplifier and a big antenna and a big broadband transmitter gets on that space and kind of blankets our area with RF, we're going to have a hard time communicating. And a lot of people, uh, hams included, we're not really that deep into spread spectrum communication, which would kind of help out a little bit in that space, depending on how we used it. Things would be tough, right? Keep that in mind. So that's the FCC enforcement memo. And, and I think they had to say something. I, you know, this is kind of a, a historic time. 2020, 2021, a, ma a majorly historic time for the world and for the United States. But the ARRL, they also came out with a, a real quick and, and to the point statement I felt was really well written. We're going to read through this as well and I'm going to comment on it. The ARRL title is ARRL on the Purpose of Amateur Radio. This was also released on the 17th. For over 100 years, Amateur Radio and the ARRL, the National Association for Amateur Radio, have stood for the development of the science and art of communication, public service, and the enhancement of international goodwill. Amateur Radio's long history and service to the public has solidified and well-earned reputation that Amateur Radio saves lives. Amateur Radio operators, due to their history of public service, their training, and the requirement that they be licensed by the FCC have earned their status as a component of critical communications infrastructure and as a reliable resource when all else fails. And, and of course, right, the, one of the big things is when all else fails, radio works. In an emergency, we can set up ad hoc stations, get on the air and communicating. There's all kinds of valuable reasons for that, both at the infrastructure level of working with first responders, for medical care, and for just 
civilian use for goodwill communication out of the disaster area or just staying in tabs with your neighbors. If everything's down, ham radio and to a lesser extent the other radio services will work in that case and, and for that reason it's good. Amateur radio is about development of communications and responsible public service. Its misuse is inconsistent with its history of service and its statutory character. ARRL does not support its misuse for purposes inconsistent with these values and purposes. Very clearly stated. Really good three paragraph message from the ARRL that I think makes the point. What happened at the Capitol is not the legacy of ham radio, right? Yes, ham radio has a foundation in emergency preparedness, in its just innate capabilities. That is wholly to the side of what was used in the events at the Capitol, and I think we should keep that in mind. If you are planning to use the radios to do crime, please don't watch my videos, <laughs> please don't reference my videos, because I don't want to be a part of that, and I certainly don't want to go to bed thinking that my uh, information that I'm providing was used in a crime. That would be that make me feel real bad, so I don't want that to happen. If you are interested in amateur radio for many, many of the reasons uh, in which it's positive, helpful, interesting, and fun, please subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate that, and hopefully I can help you out. And I, I think the FCC had to do what they did here with this you know, report that they put out or this statement, and I think the ARRL did a good job of, of tempering that and saying, hey, not all hams, right? Not all hams are like this. And nor does amateur radio have a legacy of, of what happened. So anyway, I really do want to hear your comments on this one. I want to read them below. I'd love it if you reached out to me on Instagram. I am Hoshnasi on Instagram. I also, join our Facebook group if you're on Facebook. I get it. Also, consider joining us on Discord if you want a good alternative with lots of really good active communication. Hit us up over there. It is growing very quickly. And uh, boy, seriously, we had like 130 members over the weekend just because we were talking about emergency comms and getting prepared quickly. Really, thank you all the new members. Thank you for the communication that's going on there. Uh, yeah, there's so much more to say, and I don't want to make this too long because really it's something where a Q&A, a back and forth, is probably going to be a little bit more helpful. So maybe I'll consider that in the future. Thanks so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and consider watching me every Saturday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where I go live and we talk about ham radio. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.